here we are with 1.6 and this video will cover equations with radicals so first thing we have is what's called the power property and it says if p and q are our algebraic expressions then every solution to the regular equation is also a solution of this equation so if you raise both sides to a power it should have the same solutions now it's not saying that this equation basically if I say x equals 2 right, if that's the equation that I'm given and I raise both sides to the power 2 then it's saying that this equation will have um, the same solution as the top equation okay however um, notice that it has an extra solution because here, I started off with x equals 2. That is the solution, right? But when you squared it, now you have x squared equals to 4. And we know that when we do the square root property, we're going to get two answers, x equals plus or minus 2. So notice that you do get the 2, but then you get this extra answer, right? Because you get extra answers in this method, that is the reason why down here, it's always going to say check each proposed solution in the original equation because a lot of times when you put those powers on both sides you end up with these extra solutions that don't that don't um, or that are not solutions to the original equation okay so it says be very careful when using the power property it does not say that this equation and this equation are the same we just said that earlier right um, it only says that any solution to the original equation is also a solution to the new one, okay? And that's true. I got the new equation had this, and wasn't this solution a solution here? It was. It just had an extra one, right? Now, how do you solve uh, equations with radicals? It says isolate the radical on one side of the equation. So you want the radical here and then everything else over there. Then raise each side of the equation to a power that is the same as the index of the radical. So your index is whatever number is here. Okay, and so they want you to do is they want you to take that index and they want you to use it as a power on this side and then they want you to use it as a power on that side. Okay, whatever number is there, that's the number you use on the power for both sides. Okay. What that should do is eliminate the power here, leaving you with whatever you had on the inside equal to this junk with that power, okay? And so then you solve that resulting equation, and then whatever you get, make sure you check both of your answers into the original equation. Now, in the fraction section, we only needed to make sure that the denominators were not equal. For the radical section, that easy you have to actually plug in the number and figure out if that side of the equation equals that side of the equation it's not so easy as just looking at the denominator and then you can decide whether that's a good answer or a bad answer it's a little bit harder than that but we have a trusty calculator here so we will be definitely using it to its fullest capacity um, in this section okay sorry about that now so let's look at this example here it says solve this equation. Now, I definitely want to keep my radical positive, and right now it's a negative. So to get this to by itself, I think I actually want to add this giant term to both sides. So that I get x by itself over here, and then zero plus anything is the same thing and then I get that giant radical on that side, but it's a positive radical, and that's kind of what I want. I want it to be positive, and I want it to be all by itself. So the radical is all by itself. Now what power do I raise it to? You have to remember that when you have a radical with no index written, that it's a square root, because this is actually a two. And so how do you get rid of a square root? You square both sides right index and power match so you end up with x squared equal to these guys undo each other so i just end up with what's inside the radical also known as the radicand 
Okay, didn't know if you knew that word, but the inside of a radical is also known as the radicand. So now I have a quadratic. You want to keep your x squared term positive, so we're actually going to move these terms over. And then I get zero on the right, and on the left, I end up with this. Now again, you could factor that, um, but because I don't like to think about factoring, um, I'm going to go ahead and use the quadratic formula just because you get practice with it and it's just my default all the time. So negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. And you don't have to think about whether can it be factored, can it not be factored, am I going to get imaginary answers, am I going to get nice pretty little answers. You just do it and it comes out the way it comes out. You don't have to worry about thinking about what it's going to look like. So I get 8. So you get 4 plus. 4 plus 8 over 2. And 4 minus 8 over 2. Which is 12 over 2, which is 6, negative 4 over 2, which is negative 2. So I get two, what they call them, proposed solutions, right? We get two proposed solutions. Um, but I have to check both of those to make sure that they are actual solutions. So let's go up here to the top and let's check them. So first I'm going to check x equal to 6. So I'm going to plug in 6 everywhere there was an x. Now I already know what's on the right hand side. I need to figure out what's on the left hand side. So I'm going to plug it into my calculator just the way it is. And I get 0. So this is good. That means 6 is a solution. Now let's check x equal to negative 2. So I'm going to plug in 2 into the original equation everywhere I see an x. Again, we already know what's on the right hand side. Let's go check what's on the left hand side. I get negative 4. That is not equivalent which means this guy is one of those extra answers, right? It's not um, going to work. So my solution set for this problem is only going to include one number, and that is the number six. Odin. Okay, let's move on to another one. I believe this is the last one for this type of equation, and then we'll cut into another video over the rational exponents, okay? So let me focus again real quick. There we go. And let's see here. Now, my radical is positive, but it's not by itself. So let's move this positive 8 over so that it is by itself. And I get 2x plus 4. Then remember, this is a square root. So if we square both sides of our equation, the house and the square will cancel each other out, leaving me with 9x plus 27. Here, though, it means I have two of these expressions. And I have to multiply it out. You cannot square the 2x and square the 4. You won't get all of the terms. So you need to make sure you actually rewrite it twice and then multiply it out. 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 2x times 4 is 8x. 4 times 2x is 8x. And 4 times 4 is 16. So if I had squared these individually, yes, I'd get the 4x squared and the 16, but I wouldn't get these two terms, okay? Now, I can combine those two terms together because they are like terms. And I do have a quadratic now because of the square. I want to keep this guy positive, 
which means I want to move these guys over to that side. So then now I get zero on the left hand side. Um, let me just make sure that it's 16 minus 9 is 7. Okay, good. Now, again, I don't want to try to sit here and factor that, so I'm just going to use A is 4, B is 7, C is negative 11, and do my quadratic formula. So negative B plus or minus B squared minus 4 A C all over 2 A. So I get negative 7, and I don't know what I get in there. 7 squared minus 4 times 4 minus 11. So I get 2, 2, 5. That's a big number. And at the bottom, I get 8. Let me go over here. And I believe there is a square of 2, 2, 5. It might be like 15 or something. Yep, 15. Um, and so then we get two answers. We get negative 7 plus 15 over 8 and negative 7 minus 15 over 8. That's going to be positive 8 over 8, which is 1. And then negative 22 over 8. Another thing I like about this computer, which we haven't talked about yet, is if you use this button and write a fraction in there, when you hit enter, it simplifies that fraction for you. So it'll reduce it for me. So this, I did the top. So the top is negative 22 and I put it over eight and it simplified it to 11 over four. So just cuts out some of the, and I could have done the whole thing actually. I could have typed in fraction and negative seven minus 15. And then at the bottom eight, and it still simplifies everything for me, okay? So that's what I like. I like this calculator because it does fractions, it does radicals, and it'll even give me the decimals if I really want them, right? So let's check it. We gotta check both. So remember, we've gotta plug them into the original equation. So first, I'm gonna plug in one. So the right side is just two minus four, which is negative two. The left side, I have no idea. Get out of the radical, because notice this minus eight is not inside. So do your right arrow until you're out of the radical, and then hit minus eight, and I get negative two. So that one works, one is good. Now let's try the negative 11 fourths. Plus 26 over eight. Again, on the side is minus eight equal to two times negative 11 over four minus four. This one, I definitely need to do both sides of my calculator. So square root of nine parentheses fraction negative 11 over four. Oops, that's not a four. And plus 27. Notice I'm still under the radical, so I'm gonna hit the arrow, and now I'm not under the radical, minus eight. I get negative 13 over two. Now let's try the other side. Oops, I pressed the wrong button. Negative 11 over four, and minus four. I get negative 19 over two. These are not the same. So this answer is not a solution. So then I only have one solution, and that is the number one. That is the end of this concept. We'll get into the um, equations with rational exponents in the next video.